This is a fellow stag kettle, a gooseneck kettle that costs about $165 US. And this isn't anything new, this one's actually a few years old, which is kind of the point because it stopped working just outside the warranty period. So it's basically a nice looking paperweight or a doorstop and needs to be replaced. At least that's what I was told when I reached out to fellow to ask about getting it fixed. And since I didn't have an extra $165 ready to throw out a replacement, I decided to see if I could fix it myself. And it turns out that getting the kettle working again only cost me about $1. So let me tell you exactly what was going on with the kettle and how you might be able to avoid an expensive replacement and fix it yourself. The base would turn on, read the temperature of the water, and I'd even hear an audible click whenever I'd set the temperature. But then nothing. Fellow suggested that I had to scale the kettle, so I did, and I hoped that maybe, maybe that might solve the problem, but unfortunately it did not. So when I reached back out, they said the only solution was replacement, and since it had been about two years since I bought it, it was on me to do so. And you know, that's fair. I wasn't really expecting them to replace the kettle outright, but at this point, I've owned both this kettle and a Bonavita variable temp. When I reached out to Bonavita, they would not send me a replacement part because they said they didn't stock any. So I took the L on that one, took it to get recycled, but still I wasn't ready to give up on this one because I was pretty optimistic that unless there was a chip somewhere that was fried, then it was gonna be fixable. So when I asked about getting parts or the ability to get it repaired, they said they couldn't help and implied that this is sort of a standard industry practice if anything's out of warranty. And unfortunately they're right. It's fairly uncommon these days to be able to buy something that is easily repairable if it's repairable at all. And this isn't really meant to be an indictment on Fellow. I generally like them as a company and think that what they make is nicely designed and pretty well made. But I was able to figure out how to fix the kettle myself with a part that cost about a dollar. And it would have been really nice if Fellow had made a repair guide, disassembly guide or something like that and made the parts easy to access. And at this point, I feel it's important to talk a bit about the right to repair and keep in mind that this is a much bigger problem than my experience with Fellow. And if you're familiar with that and just want to see the fix, then, well, there's, there's timestamps down below, right there. Anyway, the right to repair is the ability for consumers to have access to the necessary tools, parts, and instructions to be able to repair and maintain their own products without having to rely solely on the manufacturer. So in this case, it would be me able to not spend $165 all over again on a new kettle. Some manufacturers have gone so far as to intentionally design their products to be difficult to repair, limiting your ability to repair what you own and sometimes creating unnecessary waste as your stuff gets thrown out instead of getting fixed. And the big one for me with Right to Repair is that it helps reduce waste. Having available resources to repair and maintain your stuff, you can keep it in use for longer periods of time. Reducing the amount of waste that ends up in landfills and reducing the amount of waste, wasted money. All right, so let's do it. Let's fix this kettle. But before I do, please be careful and do this repair at your own risk. Know that it will, of course, void your warranty if it isn't already outside of the warranty period. For this fix, we need to replace the thermal fuse. To get into the base, I used a two millimeter and a three millimeter triangle bit. One of the screw heads was just a little too small for the three millimeter bit. You can also use a Torx T7 and a T8 in a pinch, but make sure you have a couple of different ones in case the screw heads are inconsistent. When you open up the bottom, be careful because there's a blue wire attached to it that can come loose pretty easily. You'll see a white sheath that is clamped down on the red wire and that is where the fuse is. A small Phillips head screw holds this one in place. This screw is really tricky to get out. If you have one of these little grabbers, it makes it a whole lot easier. Anyway, now you should be able to move over the sheath no problem to reveal the fuse. I took note of the temp rating on the fuse and picked a few of these up on Amazon. They were like seven bucks for a pack of 10. All right, it's a little while later. We are much better lit this time. And now I've got my replacement fuse and crimp connectors. Uh, and by the way, if you have a multimeter and want to check your kettle before picking up all this stuff, I'll link a video in the description that will guide you through that. Probably noticed that I already have a new fuse in there that's held together with electrical tape, just because I wanted to use this in the meantime while I was waiting for the fuses. Uh, it works in a pinch, but I wouldn't recommend it. So let's do it properly. Crimping is pretty straightforward, but it is a little fiddly trying to get the wire into the crimp connector. So just be patient and take your time. Check the connections to make sure that they are secure, and then go ahead and slide the fiberglass sheath back over. Put the screws back in and everything closed up again. All we need to do now is put some water in and see if it heats up. At this point, I literally held my breath for about 10 seconds until I heard the cat. And then the kettle start to heat up.
All right, and I'm gonna leave it there for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have a fellow kettle and you're having this problem, then I hope that this helps you out. If you have expertise in this and you see something in here that looks like it could be done better, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you and I'll definitely pin it to the top. I think it's really important to be able to fix and maintain our gear, whether it be a kettle, whether it be an espresso machine. And honestly, it's really satisfying. I just finished this repair up about 20 minutes ago and I was so happy to finally have it done and finally have it working again. And for now, I'll leave you with the ethos encapsulated by this Baratza sticker. Don't dump it, fix it. See you next time.